When I first started hanging wallpaper, we were very, very lucky because we had two types of paper. That's all we had. We had a product called a simplex paper, which I'll go through shortly. The other one that we had was a duplex paper. So if you had one, you didn't have the other. That's how simple it was. Today, if you look through the books, you'll find that there is simplex and duplex, but there's also vinyl coated, acrylic coated, vinyl protected, acrylic protected, lightweight vinyl, pure vinyl, solid vinyl, expanded vinyl, and blown. Then you get your flocks, your foils, your grass cloths, your linen back products, etc., etc., etc. And then all of a sudden, the manufacturers come in and give you a brand new product where you paste the wall. So everything you've learnt on the other products, you throw out the window because this product is totally different. See? So, simplex. Simplex simply means one layer of paper. This can be printed in several ways. It can be printed with surface print or it can be printed with uh, gravure, which we'll go through shortly. Now, simplex just is one layer of paper. In days gone by, there was the paper, a coating, and then the print. Nothing over the top. Those papers, unfortunately, are coming back. And when you get a damp cloth and you wipe them, you smear all the ink. So you've got to be very, very careful on identifying the correct product for the correct area. For example, these non-coated papers that are available, you would never put them in an area where it's going to get damp or a lot of wear. They are looking good only. So you've got to be very careful because, oh, that looks lovely there, but hey, if it's not going to work, why put it there? So you've got to be very careful. A simplex paper starts off, and we all start off, and this is all paper-based product, okay? Paper-based. So you've got your paper. On top of that, they put a clay coat. That clay coat is there for several reasons. One, it is there to lie down all the fibres, and it gives a perfect surface to print on. Now, to give the stability of the product or the durability of the product, on the top of that they print, then there is a layer of acrylic or vinyl that goes over the top. Sometimes this can be shiny, sometimes it can be matte. Okay? That layer is the layer that gives you the strength or the the durability of the product. Now, you can have a paper that thick and it is no better than one, you know, just a little thin. So it's not the thickness of the paper that gives the durability. It is what is on the top. Okay? So your vinyl coated, it is that very, very thin layer that gives you the durability. Now, if you rub too hard, you can go through that coating into the ink and the ink starts to smear. The first products that I was ever hanging, we actually wore white gloves because the, the, the sweat on your hands would actually mark the paper. Now, there's some papers out there today are doing the same, so we're not going forward, <laughs> we're actually going backwards. Okay? So, sometimes your paper hanger may have to use kid gloves so that, you know, you do not, because there is a lot of oil and grease in your hands. And once you stain the surface of a lot of these products, forget it, tear it off, start again. There is no way they can be fixed. Okay? Now, the duplex paper is two layers, but sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, please don't laugh at the design. This is showing the paper, not the design. Okay? <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? That is just on 85 years old. Okay? But that is a simplex paper. Very, very thin. It is coated, this one. But as I said, that is a simplex 
paper. Now, duplex. Duplex means two, which means that it is a very heavy paper. It's got two layers of paper, normally very heavily embossed. Now, the embossing is done where we have two layers of paper and they're in big reams. And these two layers come together and they have what we call an embellishing steel. And this steel has the design actually protruding. Underneath, it has the direct opposite of that. So you've got the design actually into. So when the paper goes through, it is actually embossed. You can still get that today. That is still available. And again, please, this is, oh, this is beautiful. How about that, ladies? Isn't it gorgeous? If that was done sufficient, how do the two pieces of paper stick together? They put an adhesive in between the two, and then they go through and they're forced together while they're still wet, because the, um, the amount of glue that's put in is specially monitored so that, and the distance from where it goes on into where it's embossed is the certain distance, which means it softens the paper. So when this goes through the embellishing steel, it's soft and it's pushed in. That will never, even if you're, you paste it and you brush it hard, you won't get rid of that emboss. But you can emboss a simplex paper to the same depth, but in hanging, you'll lose 80 to 90% of the embossing because it's only one layer of paper. Again, with a true in, uh, duplex paper, you can actually see the design basically on the back. Again, this has a very thin coating over the top to give that durability. Okay? So, this one is more durable than that one. Now, we go into... We've done the vinyl coat. Now we've got what we call a blown vinyl. Blown vinyl is a little bit different. Blown vinyl is one, we have our paper. On top of that, we put the vinyl. Now, that is a special vinyl because when that gets hot, that actually expands and that will expand in the shape of the design but it expands over the whole sheet of paper <coughs> these are what we call blown vinyls because the background is actually quite thick and spongy that color in there is actually just the paper Okay, so that's a blown vinyl where the entire sheet blows up. <clears throat> now we have a product that is called, again, it is a blown vinyl, but it's a blown vinyl and a foil all in one. So the foil is basically on the paper, the blow is that's standing up quite quite strong. So again, blow and vinyl. Then we get into the real big ones, and this also is a blow and vinyl. But the vinyl that they put on is more, it's got more what we call blow in it, which means that it stands up higher. And that is all done with heat. So, in quite a few of the factories around the world, you'll find that the, uh, the red engines with the flashing lights turn up quite often because you've got vinyl and you've got heat and you've got fire. So, it's not all beer and skittles. The next one we're looking at is what we call, and it is coming back, well, it never really went out. 
and that is flock. Flock papers and foils would be some of the worst papers to hang as far as a hanger is concerned. They have a brilliant look if that is what you want in your space but they're a curse because if you get adhesive on the flock then you can't get it off. It sticks. It's like velvet. And how they do it is they print with a cylinder but they print with adhesive. Then it goes through the flocking machine and it's a big machine where it's got little pieces of, of uh, fibre and this is shaking and as it goes down it goes through a field of static electricity which actually turns these little pieces end on and they actually land end on. And again please, this is older than I am and that's saying something, okay there's a flock and when you look at these, this flock it's quite thin and this is on the ink. The other one was the foil and as I said they're both very difficult to hang. A foil is one of the worst papers in the world to hang and get a good job. Because the shinier the paper the better your paper hanger has got to do the preparation. It's like paint, you get a matte finish paint and you can get away with quite a bit. The shinier your paint, the better the preparation. So if you have a foil and your preparation is not right, even a grain of sugar underneath can look like Mount Vesuvius. So foils, quite a few. This is another old one. But this is what we call a vinyl foil. That is not metallic, that is actually ink. But the true foils is like aluminium foil on a paper bag. And believe me, you need gloves because your hands can actually stain it. As I said, both of them are quite difficult to hang. But then someone along the line, or some years ago, decided to make a foil flock. <laughs> so they put the two together and that was absolutely yes. And then of course you can have an embossed foil. So that is pretty much the difference between the products except one of the most or one of the strongest or the most durable papers is a solid vinyl. It could be called pure vinyl, it could be called solid vinyl. A lot of people thought that oh you get the solid vinyls and they haven't got any beauty with them or anything like that. Believe me you can get solid vinyls now that look absolutely stunning in every kind of design. Now as I said earlier every paper or well, 99% of papers have an emboss. The emboss is put there for a very, very good reason. One, it gives light reflection. Two, it covers a lot of imperfections in the wall. So the heavier the emboss, the better it is to hide a bad wall. Okay, so the embossing will actually change the look of the paper. For example, Again, very plain type of product, it's a solid vinyl, but when it's embossed, it actually changes the colour slightly. Now, the embossing, and this is where you've got to be very careful, the emboss reflects light. So the heavier the emboss, the more light it will reflect. That can be a good thing, but then again, it can be a bad thing because it can cause problems. So, as I said, every paper is embossed and it adds strength to the product. When you get a product like this, which is not embossed, it actually flops. When you put the emboss on, 
you can actually pick that up. It's quite solid. It acts in this one, which is a ribbed emboss, where the, the emboss goes right down the sheet. It's like corrugated iron. You get a sheet of iron with no and nothing on it, it's floppy. Make it into corrugated iron and it will stand. It is the strength of the paper. Now, we talked before a little about the clay coating on a product. The clay coating is put there, as I said, for a couple of reasons. One, it makes a good base. But there is another very, very, very important reason. And mainly in New Zealand, because New Zealand is one of the, the places in the world with the highest UV. Okay? And UV is not good. If you printed a paper straight onto, the print goes straight onto um, solid paper, then what would happen is it would yellow. You know what happens with a newspaper, you leave it outside, it goes yellow. It's called sunburn. Sunburn is the curse of wallpaper. Piece of paper, lining paper. Now I put this, to my wife's disgust, on the coffee table in the lounge. And it was there, believe it or not, for two months. No sense of humour at all. Now, <laughs> the thing is that this piece of paper never got direct sunlight. Two months. See the staining? Okay. At the same time as I did that, I put these two pieces out in the conservatory for the same length of time. That's in direct sunlight. Okay. Why am I telling you this? The reason is that, as I said, New Zealand has the highest UV. Any paper, any paper at all left in direct sunlight will sunburn. What is the most common wall surface in New Zealand? Gibraltar board. What is the face of Gibraltar board? Paper. So we've got a problem. Any room that you go into, you go into a brand new house, you've got this house to do. If the walls have been left with nothing on them for more than four weeks, they can be sunburned. Now, if you just size those walls that are sunburnt, and some of them can get very sunburnt, and, and Gibraltar board actually sunburns under wallpaper. You've done old houses, old rooms, they've stripped the paper. How dark is the Gibraltar board? And it keeps darkening. Now that in itself is not the problem. The problem is that the plaster stays dead white. So instead of having, you know, just pale beige or pale grey and white, all of a sudden you've got dark brown and white. So you've got this huge contrast. So if you hang a paper over the top of that, that is thin and light in colour, you will get what we call ghosting or show through, which means that this white plaster will ghost through the wallpaper. And that's got nothing to do with the wallpaper. That is the preparation. Okay. <coughs> the only way you can get rid of sunburn is by using a pigmented sealer. Now, pigmented sealer is oil based. Please, if you go into a shop and they say, oh, look, we've got this water-based one just as good, say no. There is, at this point in time, they will get it. There is no acrylic that will stop staining or water staining. Ever seen water stains? You know what I'm talking about? You identify a water stain, especially on Gibraltar board, 
where the stain actually is lighter in the middle and there's a dark line right around. Now that dark line will keep coming through acrylics. You can put a hundred coats of acrylic over the top and that line will still keep coming. You put your paper over the top, bang, it's there again. So, oil-based at this point in time, as I said, I believe in the future they will get uh, an acrylic sealer that will fix it, but at this point in time they haven't. Pigmented sealer, I would thin that about 10% so that it penetrates into the surface. Once that is dry, and this is the big thing, <coughs> a paint that is dry and one that has cured are two totally different things. A paint will dry in 12 hours. It takes another three days to cure. If your painter complains that when he's sanding the wall, the sandpaper clogs full of paint, that means that the paint has not cured. If it's cured, when he sands it, it just turns to powder. That's great. So, pigmented sealer. Always look very closely <coughs> at the type of sealer. Some sealers dry quite shiny and quite fatty. Try not to use those or get your paper hanger not to use those. You need a sealer that dries in a matte finish. Once it's dry, then you sand it, and this is the most important thing, you sand it with 80 grit sandpaper, 8-0. It is coarse. Some people say to me, but if you sand it with 80, you're actually sanding the sealer off? No, you're not. Because <coughs> with a sealer, it's white, it's reasonably opaque, but the, the seal qualities are actually like varnish. The pigment, the white pigment, is put in there to make it white so that you know where you're going. The white pigment doesn't do that much at all. It is the, the oils inside that seal. So, if you thin it slightly, it goes in, so it penetrates into the Gibraltar board. So it's gone in a millimeter into the paper. So when that dries, when you sand it, even if you cut into the paper, it is still sealed. Understand? <coughs>